Astronomy GCSE Topic 15, Active Galaxies. Now, shortly after the Big Bang, lots and lots of hydrogen knocking around. Uh, not much structure. The universe didn't have much structure, but things were happening very, very quickly. Gravity was starting to clump things together. We were getting some very hot, hot spots. And in there, lots and lots of fusion happening. Lots of very, very big stars were forming, not lasting very long, so dying. Uh, galaxies of stars were forming. The galaxies were merging. Clusters, superclusters, lots and lots of fusion, lots and lots of gravity pulling things together. And so there were some very, very big galaxies around, so uh, very, very big stars and black holes merging together to form supermassive black holes, very, very big black holes, big galaxies with big black holes. OK, with powerful telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope, we can see objects very, very far away and we can actually see uh, some of the, the very earliest galaxies. The further we look, we are looking back in time and we see very huge galaxies with very big nuclei which emit huge amounts of radiation. So the, the center of these galaxies emitting lots and lots of radiation, they are active galactic nuclei or AGNs, active galactic nuclei. This is a very famous picture called the Hubble Deep Field and it's pretty amazing to think that every single speck of light on that picture they're not stars, they are galaxies. So at the center of a massive galaxy, there is a, a supermassive black hole. Some of them are ridiculously big, billions of times bigger than the mass of our sun. Huge black holes. And surrounding the black hole is an accretion disk, a disk of stuff whizzing around very, very fast, a super fast hot whirlpool of stuff whizzing around. OK, that's the accretion disk. And when stuff whizzes around like that, it gives off lots of radiation, particularly X-rays for black holes. Uh, there's different types of accretion disk. And basically, the hotter it is, the, the more of the higher wavelengths it gives out. Something like the accretion disk around a protostar gives off lots of infrared, but around a, a black hole, we're talking X-rays, X-rays and gamma rays as well. Now, some material doesn't get sucked into the black hole. What happens is it bounces off the event horizon very, very fast, and it forms a jet of material which shoots away from the center, uh, and the magnetic field of the black hole helps it to form, it collimates it, is the word, into a, a jet of material stretching out hundreds of light years from the black hole. Quasars. What is a quasar? Now, the quasar is the nucleus of a very active galaxy. They emit huge amounts of radiation uh, across the spectrum, you know, all the way from big wavelength radio to small wavelength gamma, lots and lots of radiation. At the center is a black hole millions to billions of times the mass of the sun. So we're talking a massive, massive nucleus, a very, very active big nucleus. The galaxy is thousands of times brighter than one like the Milky Way. The quasars that we observe are mostly about 10 billion years old because uh, they're about 10 billion light years away. And this means that when the universe was about three to four billion years old, that was the epoch of the quasars. There were lots of quasars around at that time. <coughs> this is a, a Hubble picture of a quasar. OK. It looks like a very bright star, but it's also giving off lots and lots of radio waves. Sometimes uh, astronomers just detected the radio waves and they were wondering where it was coming from. Uh, so it was a, a quasar stellar object, a quasi stellar object, a quasar. Is it a star? We're not sure. It's a quasi star. 
Uh, the light from these quasars has massive redshifts and we'll learn from topic 16 that this tells us they are very very far away quasars safer galaxies they are quasars little brother they are not as far away as quasars they're not as luminous as quasars they still give off lots and lots of radiation they're still active galaxies okay um, invisible light they look like normal galaxies but if we look at them in other wavelengths we see that their nuclei are very very active in the middle of there there is a in the middle of them there is a massive black hole okay which moves us on to blazars which is the last slide now what would happen we talked about this jet and all of this radiation being given off what would happen if it was pointed towards the earth well if it was pointed towards the earth that is a blazar and the fact that the jet and all of this radiation is heading towards earth makes them appear much much brighter than if the jet were pointing away a little bit like a lighthouse so it's an active galaxy with the jet is pointing towards the earth okay it's directed towards the earth imagine a lighthouse and some of them as they rotate the amount of radiation that we receive can vary greatly with time and this is a blazar blazing at us